All right, hello, fun, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Stockish Project Orion mod, which is being made by form user Suicidal Insanity. And what this glorious little piece of fork looks to add into the game is, well, all the parts necessary to build your very own concept project orion mission and this is wonderful as it's been actually quite a long time since we've seen a mod out there for the game that adds in a project orion style engine so i was very pleased to see this one on up on the forums so let's uh, jump into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what we do get here and now let's grab ourselves a mark 1-3 command pod for our size comparison sake and then turn on our mod filter just leaving on Orion. And we'll head to the first category where we have parts in fuel tanks. And the first is, of course, the large Orion magazine. Now, this will be a tank not full of normal fuel, but rather of tiny little nuclear bombs, as it holds 240 atomic pulse units. Now, after that, it does have a smaller brother in the form of the medium Orion magazine, holding 120 of said atomic pulse units. And then finally, we have the small Orion magazine, which holds a quarter of the original large magazine with just 60 atomic pulse units. And if we grab these and pop them onto our uh, command pod there, you can see they're a little bit smaller than the standard two 2.5 meters size and uh, as for well really any other t fuel tank you might find they can either be attached either by the uh, attachment node or radially as a such and do just step down in size with each iteration from the full to half to quarter size holding those various varieties of atomic pulse units and who who doesn't want a fuel tank of tiny little nuclear weapons it's terrifying it's wonderful you gotta love it and now let's uh chuck these off and head down to the engine category where we have by far the most important part for this entire mod and that is the AA-64 Orion Nuclear Pulse Propulsion Engine. Quite a long name for an amazing part that does have its own fuel source holding 225 atomic pulse units. Now the engine itself has a variable yield rather than thrust where it can be as low as 0.5 kilotons or 5 kiloton explosive yield with an impulse in vacuum of 711 uh, this is calculated though at one kiloton which is the default for the engine so let's just pop this baby on and it's gigantic and i love it i mean come on look at this thing it's just beautiful now for those of you who don't know what a uh, nuclear propulsion engine is or rather a pulse nuclear pulse propulsion engine uh, it basically drops a little nuclear bomb out the back here. It falls through that hole to a safe distance. The bomb then explodes, and this bit is basically a giant piston that uh, protects the ship by absorbing the shockwave and propelling the craft forward. It's beautiful. I mean, who wouldn't love the idea of flying through the solar system? literally on the backs of nuclear explosions. It's just fun. Now, for convenience, because it is kind of a really gigantic engine when you are docked at a space station or trying to launch from here on the space center, you can retract the pusher plate. There we go. Substantially making this smaller, which is always a useful. And here is where we can, when you do have the right click option menu selected there, can adjust the yield for the explosions from the 0.5 all the way up to 5. And interestingly, you can also do that during flight, so you're not always set to just whatever you chose here in the VAB which is a quite convenient, as this can be, on occasion, a very interesting engine to try and control. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we do get up into space. Now, if we do check this thing off, the uh, last couple of parts that we have are in the structural category, where we have a number of just fun little bits and bobs. The first being 
the 2.5 Orion Spine Adapter, a perfect skeletal truss adapter for, you know, going between the Orion Spine system we'll have a look at in a moment here, and of course the standard rocket parts. We then have the 3.75 meter Orion Spine Adapter with a similar purpose from going from the spine to the various rocket components. After that, we have the spine in question, particularly the long Orion Spinal Truss. I love this part. After the engine, it's my favorite. It's just a very large truss for holding all sorts of cargo. And finally, we have a short version of the Orion Spinal Truss, serving the same purpose, just being, you know, a lot smaller. So let's actually take a look at these on our craft here. So this one going from the 2.5 to the truss size, and particularly going really, so if we pop this down here, really meant for the shorter spinal truss, as you can see there, they connect quite nicely together. And then we have the 3.75 truss here, which if we flip around, it does of course serve the same purpose uh, for going to uh, that good times and then we have the long orion spinal truss which uh yeah love this part to death it is gorgeous and with these different structural elements they go perfectly for any normal spaceship you may make you don't have to be using the orion pulse engine here as it makes a really cool part for just slapping on additional fuel tanks cargo containers etc in line on your rockets they are fun pieces and i could see myself using quite a bit with a lot of different builds and that is it for all the parts, so let's actually head on out of the VAB and head on over to the tracking station where I've got a Project Orion vessel already up in space. And so let's talk about how this thing works and some of, I'm, I don't want to say problems because they're not problems, they're admitted to be things on the mod page, they're just issues you have to overcome. And that is structural integrity. This is not a normal engine. It's not producing a just continuous flow of thrust pushing this ship forward. It is a pulse propulsion engine that literally drops a bomb behind it. It goes boom and suddenly you are propelled quickly and then there's nothing. It's a very stressful kind of travel for any vessel and on the mod page it says that if you think you have enough stresses or trusses rather may put on put on more just add more right now this is all the trusses i have going between uh the sort of main spinal truss here and these fuel tanks and this is nowhere near enough to keep them in place honestly i would probably triple the amount here and even then i don't know I don't know, because I've only so far been testing it at the standard default one kiloton yield. And even that rips these thing away. It is a stressful type of engine. So you've got to do a lot of planning and a lot of structural integrity, which is why I would probably suggest if you are going to play with this mod, maybe get Kerbal Joint Reinforcement or one of the many different strut mods that are out there that make either super struts or just, you know, crazily wonderful struts. There's a couple of them that exist. Because, uh, yeah, if we do throttle this thing up, let's actually hit the RCS here and at least get it somewhat in a line. Uh, yeah, also, it's a very large, heavy engine, so make sure you've got plenty of uh, RCSs and reaction wheels for this thing. And it's not an engine you're going to want to throw up to full throttle. That is, quite frankly, at least in my testing, suicide. It will put this craft into just so much stress, it'll start to rip apart and start to spin, because there's not a whole lot of control here. You really want to be doing just short pulses so i'm only going to throttle it up a little bit and there we go we have launched an explosive behind us and it is propelling us forward and what's really fun for this is every time it does drop one of the nukes you can see our apoapsis there go just thud a little bit it'll thud again here in a moment there it goes it just incrementally raises up our apoapsis over there now, of course, oh, yep, we've already lost one of the tanks and we're starting to spin. <laughs> this, 
This is a very difficult to control <laughs> engine, especially with this craft. I really should have designed something a little bit better. But uh, yeah, the stronger the yield, the more stress is going to be put on to your craft. But of course, the more thrust you're going to get, which is going to cause your uh, trajectory to go further more quickly. Let's actually throttle this baby up a little bit more, even though we're not quite facing the right way. Oh yeah, look at how much it jumped with that explosion. And away for the next. Ooh, we exploded a lot more. Oh boy, off the map. <laughs> we lost all the tanks. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I really need a lot more struts. Let's actually uh, bring it back to the last quick save, just so you guys can see those things getting sheared off. So uh, we'll just do a straight up five kiloton burst there and just a little bit of throttle and activate the engine. And there went all the fuel tanks. That was one five kiloton burst, which of course, because of how it affected everything, it started to put us into a bit of a spin, which is real bad. You definitely want a lot of structural integrity. You want a lot of control units to use this thing in any fashion. It's difficult, but it's such a fun engine to play around with. And yeah, that really is uh, it for this lovely mod. I mean, it is difficult, especially for someone like me who isn't the most skilled at this game. But again, the idea of having a ship literally propelled by tiny nuclear weapons is just awesome. So, if you'd like to take a look at this mod for yourself, which I would certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description, as per usual. But that, my friends, is going to be it for today. I hope you all have enjoyed. Now, you do come back for the next one. Hopefully, we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one! Oh, there they all go. <laughs> Later, folks!